we are a small firm working out of uh, Trishur. And uh, sorry. this is a work that uh, Lijo and I did for, one, for the waiting room uh, in our office. And art, beautiful architecture, graphic design, all inspire us to do and keep us informed as to what to do next. So when we started our firm in 2005, we were looking for inspiration. What was already experimented and done in Kerala, the scenery of architecture, and how do we go about it? But unfortunately, the media coverage, the documentation was so poor then that we didn't have anything to look forward to learn from. Though there were excellent architecture and excellent architects who were practicing and experimenting with architecture. So we had to kind of do it the hard way. We had to make the mistakes. We had to learn from it. So that's how we have named um, the presentation as Mia Kalpa. It's uh, a little fancy, uh, going a little fancy with Latin, and yet um, it makes a lot of sense. I would like to address a couple of mistakes that we came across and did knowingly or unknowingly in architecture. Um, well, uh, mistake is defined as so in dictionary as, sorry, I'm having a little trouble here. An act or judgment that is misguided or wrong. Coming here was, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that was, uh, that is just what the uh, dictionary says. Coming here was a mistake, it's just an example. But second paragra paragraph, uh, it's got all those words that uh, one would associate with their own work if they want to question. Um, or uh, be honest to their own work, even if it is in silence, that they would have made a mistake or made a blunder or misinterpretation and fallacy or failed at something or the other in terms of detailing or working out or analyzing their design. So uh, that's what uh, I'll be addressing here, the mistakes that we came across I did in our own piece of work. This is one of our first projects uh, that we did of Dr. Sijo and Dr. Tushara's residence where we were looking for a language that um, could suit, could maybe suit uh, the context of Kerala. And like I said earlier, there weren't any that we could learn from or we were not aware of it or we didn't have access to them. So we had to learn it from the mistakes that we would be committing. Um, and with this project, we were looking for a language that was clean, uh, that was uh, devoid of, uh, devoid of uh, ornamentation and uh, that's how this came about and um, our uh, naive architecture approach um, told us that uh, using a coping um, may not be really required and we, we totally believed that good workmanship, um, good plastering, good uh, waterproofing would solve all the problems. But then we were wrong. Um, these were a couple of shots taken uh, much into the uh, earlier times uh, of the residence. Sorry. And uh, you would see they are all clean walls. But then that was not the case uh, within a year. It showed all the signs of wear. And um, that's when we analyzed our own structure and we learned that uh, coping goes a long way. Protection for the wall goes a long way in our kind of weather where dust collects on top of the parapet and it kind of dirties the wall. There could be cracks. It could bring in water. And a simple detail like a coping could help you there. In the same residence, we. Um, we did a lot of experimentation because this being the first of our works, we didn't know where to stop. And um, I'm sorry, I'm still having trouble here. Yeah, and here uh, we did experiment with skylights and uh, most of us architects love skylights because it in it's instantly elevates the space, experience of a space. And uh, not just one, we did two huge highlights on either side of the living space. And um, I would say it was kind of like a mistake because um, though we had left a huge venting gap of 100 mm just below the top uh, piece of glass for uh, the hot air to escape, we had educated the clients that they had to keep some opening or the other uh, in the lower areas open all the time to facilitate stack effect and uh, get rid of hot air. But then um, um, busy life, lack of privacy, um, bugs, it uh, it uh, just stopped the clients from keeping it open. And uh, whenever we visit the house, it's like um, this greenhouse effect. And uh, often I've been feeling that Greta might get at us, you know, with all this greenhouse effect that we have been creating in our own uh, small houses. So uh, what we learn from here is another thing that we always should have a plan B. 
plan A might fail, um, it may not work the right way, so let's have plan B. So um, these are a couple of awards that we won for the same project. Um, it is not a boast of our, uh, our own achievements, but then as a pointer as into what um, uh, award material doesn't actually mean that they're flawless, they have their own flaws, and um, we have to see it that way. Another mistake that we learned is from another project of us, one very close to our hearts, the Selfless House, where an old couple approached us for um, their retirement home, and uh, they gave us um, all the right breeze, you know. They wanted a very rustic house, uh, something that they could uh, just be themselves in, uh, keep it a little messy and still be okay. And uh, she also wanted to use um, the furniture that she got as dowry, so that must be maybe 50 to 60 years old. So uh, this is, um, it was a perfect brief to do something like this, we thought. Exposed concrete, um, laterite plastered wall, and um, we were all game, they were all game, they were all okay with the samples, and we went ahead with the design. But then it's after they shifted in uh, that we got these uh, um, genuine feedbacks from uh, reliable sources saying that you know, the clients live in the perpetual fear that uh, the slab would cave in on them. Someone has forced it on them that plaster is some kind of a structural element that you require to keep it intact. Um, so from, from this experience, what we gathered is we, we have to learn to read between the lines. The clients might tell you a yes, so we have to kind of ask the question, do they really mean a yes or is it a no? And uh, the art of body, reading a body language is something that uh, might help us as architects. It will take us a long way. Another pointer is from uh, the regimented house, more recent of ours. Um, we all love uh, sprawling, uh, spread out plans where we get to play a lot with courtyards, corridors, uh, vistas, and uh, we too did the same in this project. Um, um, and we have this uh, huge central courtyard. The clients were in love with the rich foliage and that's what we gave them, a huge um, jungle right in the middle of their house. And um, you can just imagine, this is, just a sh this is a shot which was taken maybe two months into their housewarming and uh, now it's a practical jungle. Uh, you have trees uh, meeting the height of the skylight and uh, it's beautiful. But imagining walking through this patio uh, in the middle of the night and when you're all alone. It, it could be pretty scary. Uh, the thought came to us when we started sitting on our own residence and I thought to myself, what if I was alone at home? Would it be okay to kind of walk through this walk at night? Uh, it, it was a question that we architects tend to miss or question ourselves because uh, we are so absorbed in our own visuals of what we want. Um, so uh, when, when I said a practical jungle, I meant uh, you have uh, creepy crawlies, frogs, uh, rodents, snakes, butterflies, squirrels all coming in. And uh, that's another time when we thought as into why did we detail a screen like that? You know, the perforations coming all the way down. We could have detail in some, something uh, more creative way and um, kept all those things away, at least those snakes uh, and rodents. Uh, so, uh, like I said earlier, we get so carried away with the visuals. And uh, these are a couple of recognitions we got for the same. Another pointer comes from um, the Breathing Wall residence. Here, um, it, uh, this residence stands in a 4.2 odd sense. And uh, because of the restrictions of site, we have to kind of uh, uh, multitask um, spaces. So, yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, we had earlier on in uh, design stage uh, warned the clients that there could be several compromises, several uh, adjustments that they might have to do from their, their set requirements and they were all game for it. And uh, we designed it and the central atrium space um, that you would uh, see here had to function as a staircase uh, access core, access core uh, a wash area, the passage from the living uh, to the dining and, um, and also their love for uh, plants, uh, their favorite pastime being visiting the nursery to get uh, different plants that they already don't have. So um, we had to design as 
putting up all these functions in one. And we had warned them right through the initial stages that the staircase would get wet because this is going to be a breathing uh, atrium. You have to perforate uh, uh, the external wall some way or the other. And they were all okay with it. They, uh, they were okay with a rough finish for the staircase tread so that, you know, in case even if it's a little wet, it's fine. You don't slip down and fall. But, um, you know, how um, Malayali souls come alive uh, during finishing stages when they want polished teak, polished granite, and uh, they're adamant about it. And after all, they are the ones who are paying for it. So you give in. After a fight, you give in. And um, as you would see, they won the fight. They went ahead with polished teak word finish. And um, unfortunately, uh, what we predicted came right. Uh, the screen, perforated screens, do bring in a little drizzles of rain um, with our kind of weather, maybe it's more than a little drizzle. And, it, and obviously you can guess these staircases would get um, a little slippery at times. What we gathered from here is um, maybe as architects we could have taken a stand and then fought, which we did, I would say. But beyond that, maybe we could have left our ego and pride at some point and questioned our own design of the screen and done a, a detail in a different way. All these points, you know, it doesn't come to you then because you're so um, narrow-minded, you would say, once you have a, a beautiful design or a visual in mind. And uh, that's what we have to break as designers. Fortunately or unfortunately, this brought us the most um, recognitions. This reminds me um, of something that I read when we were browsing through experiments in architecture. And this is something that a Danish architect, um, Dorte Mantrop, had said. Uh, we must dare to experiment, um, knowing that experiments don't always succeed. Um, that's been our motto. And, um, you know, we can do this better, not just different, better. That should be the question. We must test the well-known, the unknown, and the unexpected. Without experiments, there's no change. But having said and done all that, we would say a mistake is a mistake is a mistake. Thank you.